Cubs and Giants next on ABC7. Right now from ABC7 Chicago. Series champion Chicago Cubs on ABC7. It is getaway day at Wrigley, but not before the Cubs look for the series win over San Francisco. Fans settling in, hoping their team can tie a bow on the homestand, playing their final home games of the month of May. It is the Cubs and Giants coming up right here on ABC7. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Cubs Baseball. I am your hostess, Dion Miller. The wind a bit swirling, but hopefully that won't squelch the Cubs offense that has certainly delivered over the last couple of games. But obviously, winning starts on the hill, where Cubs pitchers have gone at least seven innings in consecutive games for the first time this season. John Lester went the distance on Tuesday. Kyle Hendricks backed him up going into the seventh yesterday, and neither one of them has given up a walk. Today, Eddie Butler gets a chance to redeem himself. Butler with five walks in just three innings his last time out. For more on today's matchup with San Francisco, we bring in the guys from the booth, Len and J.D. And guys, Butler really wants to stick in that fifth starter spot. He'd certainly welcome more of the long ball to back him today. No question about it, Dion. He would like to throw more strikes as well. And more on the pitching matchup here in a moment. But let's get into our Hooters hot play. Speaking of hot, Anthony Rizzo has been red hot. Yeah, there are a number of Cub hitters uh, having a very good homestand, but nice to see Big Ridge doing his thing. Two home runs last night. He's at four in the last four ball games. The batting average on the rise. He continues to take his walks, uh, but with Rizzo obviously slugging such an important part of his game, and they tend to come in clusters, and right now he's swinging it very well. Eight game homestand, batting 370, OPS up over 1,400. Five long ones for Anthony. That's brought to you by your Chicagoland Hooters, the original wing joint. We'll get into our Blue Moon perfect pitch. The changeup for Kyle Hendricks is one of the best. Yeah, he's got such great feel with his changeup. He has the ability to manipulate that ball, make it move both left and right. Hitters know he's got a good one. They know it's coming. They still can't handle it. He puts it in outstanding spots. Throws enough fastballs to get the hitters off the changeup, and it's just a dandy. You see that late fading action down below the knees. He induces a lot of swings and misses and a lot of weak contact with that outstanding change of pace. The perfect pitch is brought to you by Blue Moon, brewed with Valencia orange peel for a taste that shines brighter. And today's starting pitching matchup is brought to you by Goodwill for whatever style you want today. Amazing. Jeff Samarja has made two regular season starts against the Cubs, one in the postseason. He has yet to beat them, coming off an outstanding start last time out. He's got one of the best strikeout to walk ratios in all of baseball. Eddie Butler has made two starts. First one against the Cardinals was really good. Friday against the Brewers, he struggled, but it was a tough day. Windy, a lot of rain. So that's one of those games you just kind of throw out and, and restart here this afternoon. As uh, Dion mentioned, the Cubs are 6 and 2 on the homestand. It'll be a winning stay no matter what, but you always want to win on getaway day. And let's check out your Mercedes Benz keys. Yeah, well, obviously, uh, left handed hitters against Jeff Samarja have had a lot of success. So you look to the lefties to do some damage here today, and the wind might provide a little help. Butler did it. Eddie Butler, 3 0 in his career against the Giants. He only has seven big league wins, but he's found success against San Francisco. Closing time, Wade Davis finished off the ball game last night through 34 pitches, so likely not available here today. Well, I wouldn't say it's summer like Dion. As you mentioned, the next Cub game here at Wrigley will be in June, but at least the sun is shining. That's a good sign. It's always a start, right, to see the sunshine. I just hope next time the Cubs are home, nobody has to wear ski caps to enjoy baseball in June. Thanks so much, guys. We are looking forward to the call. When we come back, we will take a closer look at the local, local boy coming home, Jeff Samarja on the hill for the Giants. You know this means something to him. It's Cubs and Giants, Cubs baseball on ABC7. Stick around.
ABC7 is being brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. By Mattress Firm, Mattress Firm, where we want you to sleep happy guaranteed. Remember, if it's over eight, it's time to replace. By Xfinity, Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. And by Southwest, yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. The sun is coming out as fans are settling in for afternoon Cubs baseball. As we take a look at the Bob LaCorsio Auto Group and all central standing, Cubs looking to go four games over 500 and really keep the pressure on in the central. You see them there tied with St. Louis, just a half game behind the Brewers. They will face those Cardinals to open June, so a real chance to gain ground. Today, a different day, a different lineup that will face a familiar foe in Giants pitcher Jeff Samarja. Samarja, of course, played for the Cubs at the beginning of his career, became a full-time starter here in 2012. It's time for our Comcast Business of Baseball. Samarja was with the Cubs from 2008 to 2014. Then in July of 14 was part of a six player trade to Oakland. He also spent some time on the South Side, which of course was the team he grew up cheering for. He has now been with the Giants and since being traded from the Cubs has really played well, especially this season. His strikeout to walk ratio has really been outstanding. And he's really settling into his own in that starter role. He will definitely be looking to deliver against his former team today. Samarja 15 and 17 overall here at Wrigley. Cubs would like to add to that loss total as they get set to take the field again today. Cubs have been starting to flex their muscle for sure here at home and they're proving it'll take more than Mother Nature to beat them on their home field. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we continue with our pregame getting closer to first pitch here at Wrigley. on ABC7 is being brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. By Ford, America's best-selling brand, inviting you to go further in our fuel-efficient vehicles. Check out our entire lineup at your local Ford store or buyfordnow.com. 
and by Lakeside Bank. We make banking simple. Lakeside Bank, it's about time. Our sports clip, father-son moment. Those two look like they're playing hooky to be here today, and we won't tell anyone. Enjoying afternoon baseball before maybe they go get matching haircuts at one of the 90 Chicagoland sports clips locations. That's our father-son moment at the game. Welcome back to Wrigley, everyone. You know, when the Cubs got back from their road trip to start this homestand, they were tied for third in the Central, two and a half games back. But during this stretch, beating up on the Reds and the first place Brewers, they have certainly kept the pressure on, and they've done it with the long ball. How about 23 homers in their last 13 games? They've gone six and two during this homestand, and they are really showing that Wrigley can be their advantage. And Joe Madden says that's how it should be. You definitely want to make it the place nobody else wants to come into play. That when they walk in the door, they feel uh, not only us, but they feel the fans and the ballpark tradition. You want to feel all that. Um, you want, we want them to feel all that. And it's there. There's no question it's there. So, uh, yeah, the first part of the season, we let, we let some stuff get away from us. We did. And, uh, and this, this homestand, we, we've done pretty well, although I still think we've let some things get away from us, uh, from us this um, homestand. So we're, we're, we're not... We're getting better. We're not there yet, but we're definitely getting better. We're starting to, again, I keep talking about trending in the right direction. I'm seeing that. Um, but we definitely want to make this a tough place to be. The Cubs have certainly looked more like their talented selves over the last couple of games. They would love to run their current win streak to three before they head out on another road trip to wrap up the month of May. Madden is anxious to see how starting pitcher today, Eddie Butler, bounces back from a rough go. His last time out gave up two earned runs, three overall in just three innings. They're hoping for more today. But everyone is settling in for Cubs baseball here at Wrigley. We hope you're doing the same right there on your couch. It's the series finale between the Cubs and the Giants. Len and JD have the call coming up. Enjoy the game, everybody. on ABC7 is being brought to you by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. By Hyundai. 
Visit your Chicago and Northwest Indiana Hyundai dealers today and see how better drives us. And by the Bob LaCorsio Auto Group. You're going to like buying a car this way. And today's HD broadcast is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. Glad to have you with us today. A little warmer. Wind is blowing in from left as it did last night. Some sun peeking through the clouds as the Cubs wrap up a long homestand and so far so good they've won six of the first eight and they have a chance depending on how things go today in the NL Central of being in first place when they head to Los Angeles later tonight right hander Eddie Butler will make his third start and let's check out the Giants offense he'll face it's brought to you by fix auto. Denard Spann homered last night in his first game of the series. Joe Panic had a big game on Monday in the Giants win. Belt, Posey, Crawford, pretty formidable in the middle. Justin Ruggiano is going to play right. Mac Williamson with a 12 pitch at bat that ended in a home run off Wade Davis in the ninth last night. Christian Arroyo gets the start. Eduardo Nunez was scratched due to a hamstring issue. And the former Cub, Jeff Samarge, at bats night. Cubs defensively brought to you by Plumbers 911. The only really notable thing there, Javi Baez making the start at shortstop today. That's his eighth start at short. Madison Russell's been scuffling, so he gets the day off. Emergency plumbing service is one click away at plumbers911.com. Well, here comes Eddie Butler for the third time in a Cub uniform. He was very good in his. Uh, Cub debut against St. Louis on that ball game and then really struggled with his control again a wet rainy windy day tough to be on top of your game and that the last time out against the Brewers here Eddie's a fastball curveball slider change up his velocity down a little bit in his last start as opposed to the effort in St. Louis I don't know if that's just adrenaline but uh, Busting it up there pretty good in that start against St. Louis and maybe a mile or two uh, less per hour on the fastball last time out. Laz Diaz gets the plate, Eddings, Blazer, and the crew chief Nelson, first to third respectively. Yeah, he got six innings out of 94 pitches in his Cub debut, and then it took him 92 pitches to get through three laborious innings in his last start. And he's set to work. Denard Span takes a strike. Fastball right down the chute. And that's something he did not do in his brief outing against the Brewers very often is throw strike one. He winds and fires and it's fouled out of play. 63 degrees as we get started. Weather at first pitch brought to you by Four Seasons Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing. For all the right reasons, call 866 Four Seasons. Pulled into right, now it'll get to the wall. Hayward collects the loose change. It's a leadoff double for Denard Span. Is on an 0-2 pitch. Yeah, fastball, fastball, fastball to get started. That one goes up at 95 miles per hour, but Span able to drop the head on it. Look like they're trying to crowd him. You see where Montero is. He's looking for that fastball in. Maybe that little two-seamer that would start at the hip and run back to the inside corner. But this one catches a good bit of the plate, and Span able to clear the front side and whack it into the corner. So an early scoring opportunity. For the visitors, Joe Panic 0 for 10 after a 3 for 4 night in the series opener. Well, the Giants uh, around the bottom of the league in pretty much every offensive category as a team. They're batting 228 against right handed pitching. And 
have not done a lot of slugging better of late in terms of hitting the ball out of the ballpark. Wide again two balls no strikes. Well, you see where they rank in the National League 14th out of 15 in batting average and dead last and on base slugging runs per game and home runs. That means you got to pitch almost perfectly. And they've been a lot better as of late uh, winning eight of 12 but right now eight games under 500 and 11 games back in the NL West. But strikes to span, nothing but balls to panic. Three and one. Happy birthday to Nikki Light, rooting on the Cubs today on her birthday. Hold to right. Hayward trying to get behind the ball span tags on his way to third the throw there is a little late good effort by Hayward really no chance to get Bernard span Cubs will bring their infield in. With one out. Third batter of the game. Now this is interesting alignment. Three in on the right side. Bryant stays close to the bag at third. Well, fouls. This is this decision to play the infield in here is in a deference to the, the effort of Samarja his last time out and the fact that he's pitched very well in his last handful of outings. A day with the wind blowing in from left might be a low run scoring environment so Joe Madden is going to play the infield in here. In the first inning. Butler ahead of belt. Oh and two. Kick and the pitch. And it's low. Cubs 24 and 21. A couple of percentage points behind St. Louis for second and just a half a game back of the Brewers for first. Milwaukee's lost three in a row. They'll welcome in the Arizona Diamondbacks for the weekend starting tonight. Giants grab the early lead as Belt finds the right center alley and he'll stop with a double. It's one to nothing San Francisco. Panic hit a change up to right field and put a pretty good swing on it and this was the change up here to Belt as well. Both their hits have come on 0-2 pitches. Change up that stays up. We featured in our pregame the, the blue moon perfect pitch, the change ups of Hendricks. Those balls were fading out of the zone. That one stays up and obviously a much easier pitch to get to. Buster Posey just three for 17 on the Giants road trip, which ends today. Both teams will fly to California. After this ball game, the Giants back home to the Bay Area, and the Cubs will head to Los Angeles. Ozzy sends one sky high to shallow left. Baez got out there quickly, and he's got it. A little bit of the uh, Soriano hop catching that pop up. Yeah. As you always say, you got to keep the feet moving on a windy day at Wrigley.
bring up Brandon Crawford kind of lost in the shuffle after that crazy ninth inning last night was big at bat in the eight bases loaded Carl Edwards Jr. got to three and one on Crawford before eventually getting him to ground out to the pitcher on a three two. Against the Giants. This is Eddie's 31st career major league start. He's also made seven relief appearances. Overall, seven and 16 with a 6.26 earned run average. That's the one right there. A little more conviction. This is the change up that starts at the knees and then dives down. A two one pitch line to deep right Hayward just onto the track makes the catch a couple of doubles in the inning span to lead it off belt knocked him in Giants one Cubs coming up. Airlines starting lineup. Ben Zobras day 21 game on base streak is in the leadoff position. Kyle Schwarber in left. Bryant Rizzo half three four five as we've seen here lately. Jason Hayward has been really good since coming back from the DL. He's in the sixth spot. Montero gets his second consecutive start. Big homestand for Baez. He's in there short today and Butler the pitcher bats night. Giants defensively it's been a revolving door in left today it's Mac Williamson Denard's fan play center Justin Ruggiano is in right Arroyo Crawford Panic belt third to first. Buster Posey rock solid behind the plate Jeff Samarja. Now 32 years of age. We'll do the chunk in here for the Giants today He's one and five with a 457 ERA but we look a little deeper into the numbers and it's pretty darn good. Strike called on Zobris, who has the tenth lowest swing percentage in baseball, and there are the numbers for Jeff. It's kind of like the the little girl with the curl, and really, really good or horrid. Uh, three clunkers, but uh, other than that, he's been very good. He's got one of the better strikeout rates in the National League, and his strikeout to walk ratio is the third best in the National League, trailing only Max Scherzer and Zach Greinke. He struck out 71 men, walked only 10. Yeah, this is uh, this is a challenge for him against a team that walks a lot. So he'll get to the bag and 
except the throw from Belt in time. That's now 133 consecutive batters. Without a walk, the longest such stretch of his career, and the Cubs lead the National League with 185 walks. Last four starts, he has struck out 36 and not issued a walk. He can attack. He's got plus stuff. A fastball that uh, touched 97. It's hit comfortably at 94. Slider, curve, split finger pitch. So as you look at the scope of, of Samarja's career, we, we've always known he's had a good fastball. The splitter has always been a part of his repertoire, but the rest of it has been depending on the year, right? He's got a cutter, he's got a slider, he's got a curveball, and just depends on, I guess, the uniform he's worn yeah. and what has been good or what, not so good. What what pitching coach he's working with and who's you know making new suggestions. He's a and it tweaked his mechanics. It, it, people may recall last year he had a very exaggerated turn back towards second base. Not doing that anymore. And you know he's a guy who you know worked out of the pen and then into the rotation. And as a bullpen guy, you can limit your repertoire. You you can get away with fastball split, occasional slider. But if, as a starter, and you're going to try to work your way through an order three different times, you need to have a little more diversity in your approach. One pitch he's not throwing nearly as much as Schwarber pulls foul. But this year is the cutter. And it's a pitch he had thrown more often the last two years than at any other time in his career. Two two and a Split right 87. I don't know. I don't know what split. that was. It didn't have much action. Hmm. Yeah, split. Yeah, I mean this is splitter, but it, it didn't fade at all. It's just the off-speed nature of the pitch made it effective, but it didn't have the typical movement you see from the split finger pitch. So two outs now, Chris Bryant. Left field and gone. A home run for Chris Bryant. Williamson feels like that ball was stolen away, but man, I don't think the fans can really reach over no. the basket. No. Unless it's Stretch Armstrong out there. So we're tied at one. Now with the wind blowing in, Brian able to push this ball through that strong wind and tie the ball game. Number 11 for him is and Anthony Rizzo battle for the club home run lead. Ooh. Upon further review, it's closer than <laughs> I thought. But yeah. So jumped past Bryant last night. Now Chris has tied him. I'm going to put that one under the category of we'll never know. <laughs> With that first run for the Cubs, Chicagoland's own Midwest Equity Mortgage will donate $100 to the Pat Tillman Foundation, supporting military veterans and their families. So pops into right. Ruggiano with the sunglasses on makes the catch. Bryant ties it up with his 11th of the year. And it's a 1 1 tie after an inning.
Hi. Second inning, Justin Ruggiano, the former Cub, foul tips. For strike one. Homer and a double in the Giants win Monday. Two RBIs. Third start of the series. One one from Butler is hit hard and snagged by Bryant for the out. Giants get some pretty good wax in here early. Uh, for all your latest Cubs news, please visit the ABC7 Cubs blog at abc7chicago.com slash Cubs. Presented by that guy, nationwide agent Jeff Vukovic. Go to jeffvukovic.com or follow him on social media. Nationwide is on your side. Mac Williamson with an epic 12 pitch at bat in the night. A two run homer off Wade Davis and he just hit a bullet to left that's foul. That home run ended the Giants streak of 19 consecutive solo shots. And it made it a one run ball game and that would be the final score five to four. So ended a long run of not giving up a long ball by Wade Davis. Happy 50th birthday Russ Head celebrating with Dad Tom and White Connie. H-E-A-D. Yep. He's a, a player Ed Head. I think he was a pitcher. Many years ago. Always makes it onto our all body part team. Right. And two on Williamson. Related uh, birthday wishes to Alex Wild, just turned 94 two days ago. And also a 63rd wedding anniversary from his wife, Barbara. Congratulations. Swung on and missed. Butler grabs his first strikeout. Yeah, it looks like he's starting to get uh, the feel for the changeup, and he's shown some good movement on the sinking fastball too. So that's that's the key. Just avoid that big fat number early. Get settled in and put yourself in position to, to pitch deep into a ball game. Great action on that pitch. Arroyo, the rookie, has been struggling. Under 200 now for the season. And was not in the original lineup. But Eduardo Nunez, who tweaked his hamstring last night, got scratched about an hour and a half before the first pitch. So Arroyo is in there. He's reading some comments from Bruce Bochy. Now he watches young players. Ground ball to second. He said uh, Royo hasn't taken it out on defense. He's had good body language, so it doesn't feel like it's really bugging him that much. Although you don't want to bat under 200 for sure. One one in the second.
World Champion Chicago Cubs. Tickets are still available for the next homestand, which begins June 2nd, especially for the Marlins series. Get your tickets now at Cubs.com. Cardinals, Marlins, Rockies coming to town. Hard to believe we are almost two months into the regular season. Ian Happ will lead off the Cubs second. Ten games into his career. On a robust 400 on base average. Slugging almost 650. First time around the league. Well, you were all over it. Samarja used to have not quite a Johnny Cueto turn, but it was pretty pronounced. And that is pretty much gone. It's pretty basic simple delivery he's featuring now stays tall on that back leg. Top 10 among starters in terms of uh, average fastball velocity. Sliders outside. And the one two out back. So Marja debuted in relief during the 2008 season, which the Cubs won their second consecutive NL Central title. But he was mainly a reliever. And then remember the story when uh, Theo Epstein took over Jeff Samarja basically walked into his office right and said I want to start. Theo said all right. And he's done nothing but since 2012. And he strikes out half. I think a lot of people look at the, look at the, the stuff and the makeup and they saw you know high leverage power arm late inning guy but he certainly has the diversity of pitches to succeed as a starter. He's had four consecutive 200 inning seasons beginning in 2013. The pitch to Hayward is popped up. Into the left field grass, and it's caught by Arroyo as Crawford was really battling the sun. Crawford saying, Thanks for catching that. I couldn't find it. And the skies have brightened. It's a breezy day. There will be some challenges on pop ups and fly balls today. have been on since we started even though apparently not necessary and a strike to Montero. Jeff 12 and 11 last year with a 381 ERA his first year in San Francisco here before he was over on the south side of town. Wind and a two one three balls and a strike. Got 
His long streak without a walk, so you know he wants to challenge here. Yeah. And another pop up, similar spot. And Arroyo will make the basket catch. So I think the veteran Crawford saying, kid, you got all the pop ups today. After two, one to one. Start your day the Chicago way with ABC 7 Eyewitness News in the morning. Weekdays with Terrell Brown, Tanya Babich, Roz Varen, and Tracy Butler. One to one. So Marja will lead it off against Butler. I want to do a game where we have a live band up here in the booth with us. Playing the music. Like literally live yeah. to break. Where would we put them? I don't know. We'd have to jam them in here somewhere. They could have their own sound booth. Uh, the new offices. So Marja bounces to Bryant. Hey, Cubs fans, help send your Cubs to Miami for the 2017 All Star game. Vote early, vote often. Vote now at Cubs.com slash vote you can vote up to five times per day and up to thirty five times total so set aside one week and you got it mark it on your calendar I need to vote today I think the Cubs will be well represented in the starting line that would be a big thrill for Anthony being from yeah down there. A lot of competition at that position. Span lines into center, half dives, and he got it for the out. Gutsy play, center fielder leaving his feet on a sinking line drive like that. You risk giving up some extra bases for sure, but a good read and a heck of a play. Can't be scared. And some hard outs for the Giants in this game. Oh, and one to panic. Is 
pitch. Mm. Tough one to lay off. Mm -hmm. And he could have gotten a call but did not. Panic usually makes a throw it in there. Doesn't expand very much. A little two seamer, a little runner down and away here. Hit pretty well. Hap will make the grab and a seven pitch third for Eddie Butler. One one. Afternoon here at Wrigley. Miguel Montero, two hits last night for the Cubs, finds himself in the lineup for a second consecutive day, not just because of what he brings on the field, but his value behind the plate and in the clubhouse. He's certainly taken on a mentorship type role with a lot of these young players, and his voice is speaking louder because he's been so consistent both on and off the field. And Joe Madden summed it up today, saying he's been nothing short of impressive. And JD. Thank you, Dion. Yeah, it's uh, been a bit of a renaissance uh, for Miguel. Legs are fresh. I'm sure he'd like to play more, but you know, then we get into the whole cause and effect thing, right? You play him more because he's been really good, or has he been good because he's been playing less? Right, and I think I think there's been a buy-in from Miguel, and that's always tough. You know, this guy is an all-star player. He's got a great resume. And it's tough to be told, you know, you're, you're the backup. And I, I frankly, I think he's probably played more than maybe he thought he would, and, and many of us thought he would at the start of the season. And he's gotten off to a good start with the bat. Pitchers are comfortable when he's behind the plate. One and two on Baez, who's had a couple of two strike hits in this series. And pitches that have caught way too much of the plate. Uh, we know he chases a lot. He's eight for 13 over his last four games with two homers and eight knocked in. That is a fair ball. And Samarja just able to beat him to the bag. A nice play by uh, Bell and Samarja here as he tries to poke this one down into the right field corner. Bell cuts it off. Highs, uh, throws a little bit high to Samarja, but a former wideout. Yeah, catches just, it in stride. Just gonna say he runs like a wide receiver. Pitcher to pitcher and a strike to Butler. Look. You mentioned it. Butler's given up a lot of hard contact, but he's he's getting outs. Swing and a miss on a good curve. 
it's never as simple as just here yeah, I'm going to throw it over the plate hit it as hard as you can but when the wind is helping you you certainly can be more aggressive and, and uh, you know, nobody on base you want to be aggressive you want to challenge hitters. Third strikeout. We live the magic of last year's historic run with the official 2016 championship season fly the W book, which features personal essays by Tom Ricketts, Theo Epstein, and others, as well as never before seen photos. For more information, visit Cubs.com slash fly the W book. Zobrist with two outs. Samarja has retired eight of nine. The only guy who got on was Chris Bryant, who homered. Including the playoffs last year, Samarja has an ERA of almost 10 in three previous starts against his original team. With the White Sox a couple of years ago and one with the Giants last year in the regular season and then one in the postseason. And pitching for the White Sox, Chris Coglin hit a couple of home runs off of him in one ball game. Rizzo got him as well. Pretty sure that start on September 1st of last year, he threw like 47, 48 pitches in the first inning. Really was a grind. And this one out toward left center and down. Williamson, little bobble. Zobrist on base for the 22nd consecutive game. Puts the foot down, keeps the hands back. Crouch and just slashes it the other way. He was hitting 391 on the homestand coming into this game. Schwarber struck out in the first. The longest homer of his career Tuesday, according to StatCast, 470 feet on to Sheffield. Homestand. Kyle launched Neighborhood Heroes, designed to recognize first responders. A little vulnerable to that elevated fastball. Nice piece by uh, Kerry Muscat on uh, Cubs.com about Kyle and his family. Dad, a, a police chief. His mom is a nurse. His sister is in the National Guard. A service oriented family, the Schwarbers. Found back out of play.
this local kid we've been talking about this week just brought up by the uh, Red Sox Sam Travis. Yeah. Uh, pretty sure they were teammates at Indiana. Schwarber and Travis. Outside two and two. Show me heater there. So you see where they go here. Samarja likes that splitter when he's trying to put away a left handed hitter, or they may go with that high heater again. Got Notre Dame against Indiana here. Samarja and Schwarber. And Schwarber was a heck of a football player in high school. Linebacker. Got a lot of attention from D1 programs. Go time for Zobrist with two outs. Swing and a miss. To get Schwarber for the second time today. After three from beautiful Wrigley Field, Cubs and Giants 1 1. To you by Four Winds Casinos, your entertainment escape. Tied at one. Belt with an RBI double in the first. The Cubs' number three hitter, Chris Bryant, homered. The ball struck well, but lined right to the shortstop on the other side of the bag. That's Zobrist. Time now for the Dunkin' Donuts Fun Cam. America runs on Dunkin'. Give us a scouting report. That's Mo Resner. He is, what they say, 86 years old. Came out. He's warming up out there in the park, getting ready for his first pitch. No, no, Didn't no, like no. the way that one played out. And then he goes right back out there. Fans really got into it. Good frame the by outside corner. Felix Pena. <laughs> that was fun, man. He went jogging out there. Yes. He fired up. Oh my. Huh. Huh. Laz Diaz, the home plate umpire, um, he was thought to have a pretty big zone, but he missed that one. That mask wearing union. 
Eddie Butler basically learned how to pitch from Gary Lavelle, former big league pitcher, mostly as a reliever and most of it as a San Francisco Giant. Took a private lessons starting when he was nine. Wasn't allowed to throw a breaking ball until he was 13. Three and one. I don't know if Eddie was in it for the snacks. Like uh, Matt Moore was when he was a kid, but no, probably not. If he was getting private instruction, <laughs> he was nine, he was nine years old. Yeah. yeah. Three and two on Posey. Crawford on deck. Where to the plate. We'll try it again. Got some other matinee action today. Mariners have a 4 2 lead in D.C. as they go to the ninth inning. Are looking for a four game sweep at Philadelphia. 1 0 Colorado in the uh, seventh as Posey takes the one out walk. A Jeep out of town board. Bartolo Colon got knocked around again. He's off to a really rough start for Atlanta. Yeah, he's got an ERA approaching seven. Tyler Anderson pitching shutout ball for the Rockies today. If the Pirates win that ball game. They will have split that four game set with Atlanta. They scored the 12 last night. Back to back to back home runs in the 10th inning. Uh, they did win. That's a final. That's an over. Mm -hmm. Nine to four. Nova beat Cologne. Swing and a miss. Gregory Polanco was taken off the DL before that game by the Pirates. He had been on the uh, DL with a strained hamstring. Broken bat liner and a base hit. Two on for Ruggiano, who lined out his first time up. Crawford last time hit the ball sharply to right field. He lined out, proving that uh, occasionally the barrel can be overrated. Put it on the sweet spot last time for an out, breaks his bat this time, and it's a knock. So the Braves will get a head start on the Giants. And will likely land in San Francisco before the Giants do. They'll match up tomorrow night at AT&T Park. They can go to Lefty O'Doul's and I'm not sure it's still sing open. A, sing a tune or two. I know it's supposed to be closing again. They've they've, they've cut to close that place many times, but it, uh, it, may, it may be done. Yeah, Bartolo Colon of <laughs> MLB Taverns. Popped up. Final in effect. It's kind of fun to watch Brian and Baez in tandem pursuing that one. Baez continues to call, so this yields. 
I always find the infield fly roll kind of fun. Um, let's just say Baez had to make a real late adjustment and make like a diving catch. And the crowd would have oohed and odd and it would show up on all the highlight reels. And the out already would have been recorded. The actual ball into the mitt would have been irrelevant. I think we su 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 uh, sh should suggest to Javi that the next time that happens, he catch the ball behind his back. Yeah, right. Just for entertainment right. value. Now the runners can advance at their own risk. So if that ball drops, it could be a, an issue, but yeah, the batter's already out. Runners go, and they'll get there without a throw. Double steal. Posey takes third, Crawford second. I didn't see Crawford's jump, but Posey had a pretty aggressive lead and a good jump there from second base. It's their first stolen base of the year, both of them. Mars is going along nicely. This is a pretty important confrontation for Eddie Butler. And he's got the jump on Williamson one and two. Wooden bite. I see Hunter Pence on the DL. I'm sure itching to get back. Had a hard time staying healthy the last few years. For the shortstop, Baez. So the Giants strand two in scoring position, and we go to the bottom of the fourth, still tied at one. Thumbs up, baby. Let's check out our Toyota home run cam. There's Brian off Jeff Samarja in the first inning. Just got it out. Yeah, and Mac Williamson, the left fielder, initially pointed up the uh, claiming interference. We thought it was a bogus claim, but when we looked at the replay, we see he had a legitimate point. And had he been more emphatic, he may have gotten Bruce Bochy out of the dugout to. Get the umpires to take a second look at that one. A couple innings later, Bruce did come out and was having a. A chat with home plate umpire Laz Diaz. I'm assuming about that play. It was obviously far too late to 
issue any kind of a challenge. And Jeff Nelson went over, I believe, to the replay communication area uh, in the last changeover. And yeah, I'm sure they are curious to find out how close it was. Can't change it now. The roll one to Bryant is high. One ball, one strike. Hey, the Yankees postponed their game against the Royals about five hours prior to the first pitch today in New York. The ominous looking forecast in New York, so they called it off. One ball foul. Panics got it. That home run, Chris, hit off of Samarja, just the second home run by a right handed batter off Jeff this year. Last start against the Cardinals, he went eight shutout. About five hits, so no walks, struck out eight. He's been impressive tonight. Today, some swings deep in counts off the outside corner, but it's, you know, he's getting the jump on a lot of hitters, putting them in swing mode. Uh, they're certainly they're aware of his numbers and the fact that he's been around the plate, so they're up there looking to swing. Himself in terms of free agency. He's chewed a, a long term deal with the Cubs a few years ago. Bounced foul. Couple of reasons for that. Number one, he, he's a confident guy, so you would have expected him to to wait. Uh, the other thing is, he, he got a lot of money after he decided not to play football and go the baseball route instead. So a lot of times they tell you, you know, get that first big multi-year contract. And he waited it out. Ended up signing a five year, $90 million deal with the Giants prior to last year. Take him through the 2020 season, paying him 19.8 per. Rounder 2006 by the Cubs traded with Jason Hamill to Oakland and the deal that brought Addison Russell Billy McKinney and Dan Straley to the Cubs traded by Oakland to the White Sox following offseason and signed with the Giants in December of 2015. Ruggiano makes the catch two outs here in the Cubs fourth. And today's save of the game is brought to you by Felco. Watching it happen. Make a fine diving play out and straight away center field. Nice play by Happ, who's played all over the outfield. He can also play second base. Save big with Felco and two windows for the price of one. Pitch to Happ. This is high. Speaking of saves, cool little uh, John Miller story. John, the uh, Hall of Fame announcer for the Giants, 
Back when he was 20 years old he was working at a little television station he told us a story uh, at lunch today and he wrote a letter to Charles O. Finley the owner of the Oakland A's and the Golden Seals. They were the California Golden Seals at the time early 70s he said hey we'd love to broadcast your NHL games. So he called the station. Talked he said is this is, is this John Miller he said yes it is he said well let's talk about doing the games he said well you should probably speak to my boss about this and he said he then called the station management said oh by the way I wrote a letter to the NHL team <laughs> I didn't think they would call and he ended up broadcasting NHL games in the Bay Area he said did seven or eight games before they basically said we can't afford to do it anymore uh, they would take their production truck to Oakland broadcast the game on tape and then the next day it would air on tape delay. And that's how he started his career. A little remote truck and a couple <laughs> of cameras. As Hap strikes out. Cal Batney shoots he scores. One one after four. Peace. Ruth and she is an original member of the Die Hard Cubs fan club dating back to 1944. And uh, Barb is here at the ballpark today with her daughter in law, Kathy Hart. You know Kathy from the Eric and Kathy show on the radio. Nice play, Eddie Butler, as he'll get Arroyo. So great to see Barb here at the ballpark. Barb, 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 Barb Ruth. How about that? <laughs> She's having a great day. Oh, the pride of Valparaiso Hi, High, Jeff Samarja. Played everything at Valpo at football, basketball, baseball, wrestled, ran some track. He was a grappler? Yeah. Where do you find the time? I don't know. Did he ever go to class? He just deposited one into the left field corner. And that is a one out double. They've got four hits, three have been two baggers. 
Yeah, Span and Belt uh, traded places back in the first inning. That's how they got their run. Uh, this is a breaking ball that drifts over the inner third. It's down, but it was intended to be away. It was not. That's a good looking swing. Marge on second with one out. Had uh, good swings today. Double first time up. Lined out to happen in the third. As we know, Jeff runs well. And he's going to jog to third on a wild pitch. Field will creep in now as Dunsing starts to get ready. We got a Lola matchup tonight in Milwaukee. What do you got? Ray against Davies. It's going to be uh, about a seven hour game. They're going to play all day and all of the night. And Span takes the walk. They'll have plenty of time to work out the kinks. I got no clue what you're talking about. Ray and Ray Davies. Who's that? The Kinks? I've heard of the Kinks. Yeah. Who's Ray? Is he Ray's the, front the man? lead singer. <laughs> kind of a name. Ray Davies. He sounds like your mailman or something. What kind of, that's no rock and roll name. Oh, Ray Davies. You can send your tweets at Jim Deshays. <laughs> name needs to be Xander or something. Uh, well, I'm ever on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and I got to identify. <laughs> Front man for rock bands. You're my phone a friend. <laughs> okay. Hey, watch your source for everything in Chicago. ABC 7 Eyewitness News weeknights at 10 with Chicago's team of Alan Krzyzewski, Kathy Brock, Cheryl Burton, Cheryl Scott, and Mark Greco. I guess we will not do any easy beats trivia today. First and third double play depth in the middle. Panic takes ball one. Butler came up through the Rockies organization. He was touted as one of their best prospects. Live arm, good movement. A guy who's been able to get a lot of ground ball outs. That's exactly what he needs here. On the corner. That's what he's shooting for. A little runner off the plate. Panic tries to pull that one. That could be. A tidy little four six three. Of course, Panic is a pretty smart hitter. So he's going to be looking to get something up a little bit, something he can keep his hands in and, and get airborne. Butler able to work out a little mini jam in the fourth with. Second and third, two outs after the double steal. He got the ground ball off the bat of Williamson. Gotcha. A little heavier lifting uh, to do now with one out, first and third, gotcha. and panic in the box and belt on deck. Pause at the set, the pitch foul.
Two and two. Each team with a run in the opening inning. Nothing since. Giants, however, on the verge, they believe. Butler will throw it first. Not sure Rizzo ever did tag Spam. Oh, maybe. I think he's out. Joe will challenge. On the pant leg, I think he's going to yeah, get him. I think so too. That's going to be a huge second out. Right there, he's out. I'm going to mark it in my scorebook yep. right now. That should not take long. Pick off one to three, two outs. This manager's challenge is brought to you by the Subaru Love Promise. It's our pledge to do right by the Chicagoland communities where we all live and work. And the catch in this extending a little bit, and there's the tag before the hand gets to the base. Boom. Well, Butler helping his own cause with that quick strike to first. We're taking a long time. This would be one where we, we would get a, a quick reversal on. So some arches at third, but now there are two outs. Two two on Joe Panic. Line foul. Inning, but the big pickoff and Butler a pitch away and getting out of it. Three and two. So that uh, spray chart there, everything away pretty much to panic. They, they did, you know, Montero wanted to go up and in with a fastball, and Butler wasn't able to get it there earlier in the sequence. Sometimes that's a tip to a catcher. Well, I'm not going to bother calling for that again. I don't want to make a mistake inside, so let's go where he's comfortable. Softly rolled to Rizzo. And that'll end the inning. I got to tell you, JD, you really got me going on that Kings mm -hmm. conversation. <laughs> it is 1 1 in the fifth.
Three premier options at Wrigley Field has to offer, like the uh, Dell EMC Legends Suite, which includes an all-inclusive suite experience, and best of all, a visit from a former Cubs player. Visit Cubs.com slash premier for an option that fits your needs. Big escape job by Eddie Butler as the Giants at the top of the order at the plate. First and third one out. They stay tied at one. Marja back to work. Pops a fastball in, bottom of the zone on Jason Hayward. So Brian Dunsing up in the Cubs bullpen. We'll see how Joe plays it here. If he's got a run scoring opportunity and Butler's spot comes up, he may opt to pinch hit. Bullpen's in pretty good shape, except for the closer, Wade Davis. And it's kind of ironic because he was. Uh, Obviously well rested. He hadn't pitched in a week prior to last night, but he threw 34 pitches in the ball game last night, so he's probably down today. Montgomery up tossing. To deep right and gone for Jason Hayward and the Cubs lead two to one. Jason Hayward with his fifth home run of the year. Ball out away from him and up a little bit. We talked so much about how good he is down. This one's up, but it's still out away from him where he get those arms extended. Pretty swing by Jason. There's your Toyota home run replay. Triple in the ball game last night. So he now has a hit and has scored a run in all five games since coming off the disabled list. Cubs lead for the first time this afternoon. The basket has been the Cubs offense friend so far. We call it a gift basket. Why not. And today's game would be a basket case. Oh, they're playing basketball. <laughs> yes. I'll stop. To all those. Okay. Splitter misses outside. When did, I don't know. Word game day, I guess, for me. See Montero with a really strong picnic basket. Great stats, yeah. Two one ground ball into right the base hit. Fourth hit of the day for the Cubs a couple of long ones a couple of singles now Baez with an opportunity to. Keep the line moving. He's been far better here at home than been on the road. 338 here at Wrigley coming into this ball game. Just a buck 79 away from home.
turned into a nice spring afternoon here in Chicago. Sixty three degrees but. It feels a lot warmer in the sun. Yeah, it's one of those days where you're in the sun. It's nice when you're in, you're in the shade. You're probably still bundled up. Marja obviously with plus stuff. I don't think there's a lot of deception in his delivery. I don't think he's one of those guys with hitters to say, "Man, I have a hard time picking up the ball off of him." Pretty clean delivery. He's been very durable in his career. Contrast his uh, style, say, with Jake Arrieta, who's across the body. Shoulders tipped up, really hides the ball well. Don't see much of that with with the Jeff. Long ball to the shortstop Crawford, and they quickly turn two. Hey Cubs fans if you miss any of today's action ABC 7 will rebroadcast each one of its Cubs matchups on the live well network today's Cubs Giants encore will air in its entirety at 7 p.m. on ABC 7's digital channel 7.2 and the following cable channel positions. Butler bats now leading by a run. One and one. That was minor league report. Iowa five nothing winner yesterday over Reno at the Triple A level. Double A Smokies beat uh, Biloxi in ten innings. Myrtle Beach swept a double header. Against Winston Salem, South Bend Cubs lost at Bowling Green. Victor Caratini off to a great mm -hmm. start, batting 342 for Iowa. It's a name worth keeping an eye on. You can catch, play some first base. Butler with a grounder to belt. Take it unassisted. And the Cubs are retired in the fifth. Jason Hayward into the basket and right. Come dancing. It's only natural.
Be by Lakeside Bank. Lakeside Bank, it's about time. Eddie Butler can get the win if the bullpen can hold him the rest of the way. And Mike Montgomery, first man out of the shoot. He's 0-3 with a 260 ERA. He's pitching for the 16th time. Losing batters hitting 223 against him. 3-4-5. We do up here for the Giants in the top of the sixth. Three and five. Belt and Crawford both swing from the left side. So Montgomery gets the call. Yeah, that might be the case. Have a two outs, nobody on. Joe would let Butler take the at bat and go ahead and make the pitching change anyway. Save his resources, save those pinch hitters for run scoring opportunities if need be. Michael Paul Montgomery, 6'5, 215, 27 years old, and inside 2 0. Bullpen is fresh. Starters heating up. 16 innings over the last two nights, so Butler pulled after five today. And now three and zero. Oh. Mike got the final out of Game Seven of the World Series and got his first career save. And a strike. It's three and one. Pitching for the Seattle Mariners. Who would have thought he'd end the year helping break a 108 year drought? It's a crazy game that way. Chicago Cubs, yeah. So he's back in at three and two. And a ground ball backhanded in shallow right by Bryant. For the out. Now our Toyota League leaders. Cubs rank third in the National League in bullpen ERA. We'll see the Dodgers this weekend in LA. Clayton Kershaw will pitch in that series on Sunday. Jake Arietta and Alex Wood, who's 5 0 with a 188 tomorrow night. John Lackey, Brandon McCarthy, Saturday evening. And then John Lester and Clayton Kershaw on Sunday. We'll have tomorrow night's game right here on ABC 7. Line shot. Half. Makes the catch to retire Posey. Two outs. Nice running catch by Hap. Solid contact for Posey. Now Cubs had a two run, three run lead. Butler's probably still a pitcher. Let's see this from most managers with their fifth starter get through five innings with a lead. You know, comfortable with the bullpen. Go ahead and make the move. It's a West Coast matchup here on ABC 7 tomorrow night. Arietta and Wood. Oh, and two on Brandon Crawford. Jake Arietta likes pitching in California, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got outstanding numbers out there. Of course, the no hitter at Dodger Stadium. I'm not sure, but I think that guy is celebrating a birthday today. Some of these shows. <laughs> Change up. Rizzo's got it. Montgomery for the one, two, three, six. The Cubs lead the Giants two to one.
Wrigley, welcome back. New day, new lineup for Joe Madden. Ben Zobris leading off today. Kyle Schwarber batting second. We asked Schwarber before the game if moving around the lineup bothers him at all or changes things for him. He said, no, for him it's just about keeping it simple at the plate. He did admit that that rocket shot onto Sheffield earlier this week lifted a weight off of his shoulders. He also said the weather has been pretty dicey. He said every time we took the field this week, it felt like somebody turned on the sprinkler. They're enjoying the temperatures today. Hope that hitting remains contagious as they head out west. Len. Thank you, Dion. Ben Zobrist against Jeff Samarja. All in one. Schwarber and then Bryant. We're always in the firsts in this game, right? Yeah. Um, word is that our good friend Ken Hawk Harrelson was one of the uh, front runners in terms of batting gloves, right? Golf glove mm -hmm. back in the uh, 60s. Um, I'm trying to remember the first guy I saw wear sunglasses at the plate. High and deep to right. It's going to go for Zobrist. Sunglasses working just fine for him today. No basketball this time. Obers continues his torrid hitting. High heater. Squares it up pretty good and fared pretty well to right field here today. Toyota home run replay. That's number six for Zorilla. The Zorilla crunch. He's now homered in three of his last four games. Bryant, Hayward, Zoe with the homers. So the first guy I can think of would be like late 90s Jose Hernandez. Yeah, Not sure I if he was the first, yeah, I have no idea. But, but in your era, nobody did it, right? I don't remember. Sunglasses at the plate. At the plate, because they all did use the flip downs on defense back yeah. in the 80s. Well, the Oakleys came around. I remember, guys were wearing Oakleys in the outfield. Um, I don't remember seeing anybody wear them at the plate. Now it is pretty common. Yeah, Jeff Kent used to wear those kind of orange tinged ones, those shooters, glasses. Yeah, those flip downs that the belt is wearing, that was very common back in the day. Day for Schwarber. Strikeouts in all three at bats. RBI Baseball 2017 returns with fast paced pick up and play MLB action packed with all your favorite MLB teams, players, ballparks, and much more. Get RBI Baseball today for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and mobile devices. Learn more at RBIGame.com. Homer and a ground out for Chris Bryant. Getting uh, votes on Twitter for Ricky Henderson and uh, Tony Gwynn. Wearing the uh, sunglasses while batting. I seem to recall it was all around the same 
point in time. Right around the time Jose Hernandez became a brewer. Like, uh, 98 99. Corey Hart was a brewer. <laughs> he wore them at he night. Well. Yes. Bryant strikes out, two down in the Cubs sixth. It'll bring up Anthony Rizzo. Uh, Dusty Baker uh, credited right, as being part of the first ever high five, at least in baseball. In the late 70s. Ian Glenn Burke. Sheffield. Yeah, that's funny. The evolution, the you know, just the slap five. Remember, the slap five. Give me five. The ball hit hard and down for Rizzo. Ball rests on the warning track right near the 368 sign. It's a double. That big man is heating up. Two home runs yesterday, three hit game, and now this double into the alley in right center. We're feeling good about things heading out for the uh, two city trip to the West Coast. Swing and a miss by Hap. Well, Samar just still hasn't walked anybody. He has seven strikeouts, but he's surrendered three home runs. Ricky Henderson in 91 breaking Lou Brock's stolen base record and he is wearing sunglasses. But did he wear them to hit? Well right. He wore them to run. I would assume he wore them to hit. I don't know. Ricky being Ricky you never know. So if we asked Ricky if he came up with that idea he would say yes Ricky did <laughs> <laughs> Ricky didn't like sun in his eyes three and two my favorite Ricky might have been when he found out they were gonna have to take a charter flight he said you mean we got to fly with people Commercial flight, I should say, not a charter flight. So I just serves and he walked in. There's that first walk since April 28th. Let's check out some exit velocity brought to you by Subaru. Jason Hayward, I believe, has the highest average exit velocity on the club. That one 108 off the bat. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, 
much improved uh, Jason Hayward here in 2017 more solid contact. Put in a lot of work. This winter all throughout spring training and it's paying off. So that ends a streak of 154 consecutive walkless plate appearances for Jeff Samarja. Pretty impressive. He had gone the entire month of May without allowing a walk prior to that free pass to Hap. Hayward pops it up. Looks like it's playable. Posey got a late break, but Belt was all over it. And we're done in the sixth inning. On a sunny afternoon in Chicago, the Cubs have hit three homers off their former teammate in a couple of cases. 3 1. App from Eyewitness News. Search AccuWeather in the App Store and download to get Chicago's most accurate forecast from ABC7, your AccuWeather station. A 3 1 ball game. Seventh inning. Montgomery to Ruggiano. Ground ball backhanded by Bryant. Looks it in. One away. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Chicago Cubs and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs. Mac Williamson. Ball one. Five. 
final home game here in May. Seven and two homestand. Be ideal. You follow a two and seven stretch. Baez decides to backhand. Five up, five down for Montgomery. Eddie Butler today, five innings, four hits, one run. Very first batter of the game, double came around to score. That's all he allowed. He walked two, struck out one through 69 pitches. Give up a fair bit of hard contact, but just the one run. Arroyo cuts and misses. They're in extras in Philadelphia. Rockies one, Phillies one in the tenth. Mike Morse somehow got out of the way of that screamer. Arroyo 0 for 2 today, a couple of ground outs on the second one to the mound. I think just 148 over his last 16 ball games. Mariners beat the Nationals 4 to 2 in Washington. Nelson Cruz with a go ahead three run homer in the sixth. Is picking up in intensity. So I can tell because my papers are flying yeah. out more than they were earlier. Nationals are in a pretty comfortable position in the NL East. They have had some bullpen issues. It was the bullpen that gave it up today. That is a fair ball. And we will have the seventh inning stretch. It is presented by Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. For this afternoon stretch, please direct your attention to the outfield video boards. All right. Let me hear you. Good and loud. On one. On two. On three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if I ever get back. Oh, it's root, root, root for the party. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes you're out of the Well, Jeff Samarja has outlasted Eddie Butler today, but he's trailing three to one. This will be his uh, final inning. 
The spot due to lead off the eight. Cubs have hit a lot of home runs on this homestand. Makeup of this club, that's that's what they do. They draw a lot of walks, they'll hit a lot of home runs. They hit uh, 26 in their last 14 games. Uh, did you know young Darren Baker is graduating from high school this weekend? How old was Darren when yeah. was, he, was he four when uh, JT Snow play at home plate in the World Series? Probably sounds about match. right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Dusty, two thousand. Well, uh, two thousand two. Dusty will take off the uh, weekend series to attend Darren's high school graduation. Congrats. One two pitch. Fouled off. Yeah, if you don't know what we're talking about, that was in the World Series, and uh, the little guy was about four years old. And he was serving as a bat boy or quasi bat boy, and he drifted out the home plate and in the middle of a play. In the middle of a play. <laughs> JT Snow had to hoist him up and get him out of harm's way. Count holds at two and two. A lot of responsibility now on these giant starters with a struggling offense. No Madison Bumgarner. It's like Cueto and Samarja and Moore really going to have to step up. Matt Kane. It's probably pitched beyond expectations so far this year. Battling the sun and making the catch. Let's check out the board upcoming schedule for the Cubs. ABC 7 will have tomorrow night's game from Dodger Stadium. That opens up a weekend series before the Cubs head to San Diego on Memorial Day. And Dodgers just uh, five and five over their last ten, but they're seven games above 500. Three and a half back of Colorado in the National League West. I looked the other day, the Dodgers had the best run differential in the National League. Uh, we might have reached back into the 70s for uh, sunglasses at the plate. I'm getting pictures tweeted at me of Reggie Jackson. Reggie, yeah, I see sunglasses. Reggie with the shades on, yep. Good stuff. Popped up. Foul ground. Belt still drifting over. And that ball could possibly have been caught, but he would have had to navigate the tarp. And if your last name isn't Rizzo, you might struggle with that. Caught a lot of the plate, two strikes to Baez, but this time Samarja gets away with it. It's the third time I can recall in this series. J. 
Giants pitchers being asked by Buster Posey to throw it nowhere near the strike zone and they're catching a lot of plate against Baez. Appearance for a relief pitcher, Mike Montgomery. This is old school here for Joe. Mm -hmm. I like it. Well, this is one of those games where it's almost like it was scripted for Joe with, with the left handers in succession at the top of the batting order. I'm sure Joe's thinking going into it was I'm going to get whatever I can out of Butler and first opportunity I'm going to go to Montgomery to try to neutralize some of those left handed bats. Called oh. strike three. So Samarja ends his outing with a one two three seven three one Cubs late. You buy mattress firm where we want you to sleep happy guaranteed remember if it's over eight it's time to replace Cubs have dominated the Giants here at Wrigley Field including the postseason since uh, 2015 11 and 2 here at Wrigley Morris off the bench. Strike. Three and one. Two run lead for the Cubs here in the eighth inning. Giants actually scored first. Brandon Belt with an RBI double in the opening inning. Lead off walk.
Let's head back to the World Series 2002. <laughs> There's Darren. <laughs> Going to get the bat. He's a oh! dog in pursuit of that bat. <laughs> David Bell scored. Just doing my job, right? Strope joins Dunsing, who was up earlier. Double play ball. Two down. Taylor made 6 4 3. Uh, just like that, four outs away from a W. And it just starts to look a little dicey. Sharply hit ground ball to short, turns into an easy double play. Fine work by Mike Montgomery, whose efforts may not get noticed enough in the box score when it's all said and done, right? Because he probably won't get a win, probably won't get a save, but he's working in his third inning of relief. And nobody pays attention to holds. Look at a, a JWD, a job well done. Because we need more initials in this game. Diving stop. Bias. Throw to first. Now, what a play. Big time. Big time play by Javi Bias. And he's the backup shortstop. Thing of beauty. Bank, Lakeside Bank, it's about time. Left hander Josh Osich in relief of Jeff Samarja. Osich uh, pitching for the 11th time, 0 and 1 with an ERA of 4. And a couple lefties in the bullpen, Ofert and Osich.
a Daniels. 90 seater and a curveball. Two for three with a homer in the sixth. Batting right handed against the southpaw. Man, what a play by Baez. Yeah. Can, uh, give your everyday shortstop a day off and replace him with a guy that, that is that good of a defender. Mercedes Benz drive of the game. Ben Zobrist. Drilled into center. He's three out of four. That man is locked in. Take a look at uh, how Jeff Samarja has been painting the corners. Brought to you by Benjamin Moore and Schwarber. He had enough of uh, Jeff. Punched out three times today. And better luck against the left-hander. Giants in the ninth will have Belt, Posey, and Crawford. So adding on here would not be a terrible idea. Well, Joe really wanted to go old school. He could run Montgomery back out there for the ninth. Well, that. Would be a four inning save opportunity. Nobody currently throwing in the bullpen. Such has the sign from Posey. And he's going to throw to first. Well, Samarja was really good today. Mm -hmm. And he could take the loss. Trailing by two runs. Seven innings, six hits, three runs, all coming on solo home runs. He walked one, struck out seven. Two two offer is in the dirt. Fans, start your day the Chicago way with ABC 7 Eyewitness News in the morning weekdays with Terrell Brown, Tanya Babich, Roz Barron, and Tracy Butler. Who's going to lead the team in homers this year? Did we do this in spring training? Um, we talked about it at some point.
Bryant and Rizzo each with 11. Chris hit 39 to lead the club last year. Ground ball left side. Crawford will get one at second. Relay is late. Crawford has such quick feet out there at shortstop. He works hard to get in front of the ball, get, get himself into a good throwing position so he can make that feed quickly to second base. Bryant takes over at first. The batter is Rizzo and a check on KB. Back in safely. has been on the scene with the Giants since 2015 it's 35 times that year 59 appearances for the Giants last season. Finds the target it's 0 and 2. Step off. Nobody's had a multi run inning. Cubs have hit homers in the first, the fifth, and the sixth. Two hits. Finishing up this homestand in fine fashion. He came in hitting 370 in the first eight games. Now Hap will bat on the right side. He has struck out twice, walked once. Six at bat, so still you see a lot of fluctuation from one day to the next in terms of those numbers, and that's an important thing for a young player not to obsess about the numbers early on. Come up, have success, yeah, hitting 385, and you're thinking, man, I got this game figured out. Go through a little bit of a rough patch, and you're hitting 260, and you're thinking, oh my goodness, where did it all go? And you just can't afford to think that way. So trust the process.
Sitting in a 2 0 count. Got a break on the first pitch. And the topper charged by Crawford, and he will have to eat it. Smart play to not even make a throw. Infield hit for half. To load the bases, and that'll bring up Jason Hayward. It's the clean handle on us with no chance to make the desperation throw. Then he's going to look around for a plan B to see if anybody's taking an aggressive turn at second or third. That was not the case. And no play to be made. And now a chance for Hayward to uh, provide some separation here. Pitch to Hayward. Gets passed, and Bryant will score. Throw gets away. Here comes Rizzo. Throw to the plate. Save. Oh, is that huge? It's five to one. Yeah, it's not what I had in mind when I was talking about getting separation, but the wild pitch. Scores not one but two. But that's a sloppy effort by Posey. And trying to block that ball with a man on third. Good heads up base running by Rizzo as the throw gets by and rolls out into the infield. So the wild pitch allows Bryant to score. I'm guessing E2 allowing Rizzo. One and one. Swing and a miss. And we will go to the ninth. The Cubs add two insurance runs on a wild pitch and an error, and it's five to one.
ninth inning is brought to you by the all new 2017 Mazda CX-9. Mazda driving matters. Today's hot and cold players are brought to you by Plumbers 911. Emergency plumbing service is one click away at plumbers911.com. Michael Conforto red hot with a Mets as Belt grounds to the second baseman now Baez near the bag at second base. Russell now into play short. Zobris goes out to left. Mike Montgomery in his fourth inning of work trying to finish him off. Yeah, it doesn't happen very often in the modern game. Last cup with a four inning save, Sean Gallagher in 07. Jacob Turner of the Nationals had one earlier this year. Well, this would be the first career regular season save for Montgomery. Double play last inning. He's faced the minimum. He's only allowed the ball to leave the infield once. Giants came in playing their best baseball, winning seven of nine, but in jeopardy of dropping three of four in this series. Posey hooks a ground ball to Chris Bryant. Two down. Brandon Crawford with two gone, ninth inning. First pitch by Montgomery hit on the ground sharply, and Russell can't get it. It's a base hit. Ruggiano. Effort today. Montgomery will be out of the mix for a couple of days. And it will be a well earned break. Brilliant work in support of Eddie Butler, who looks to go 2 0. Fly ball left center. Ben Zobris makes the grab. Cubs win. Cubs win. They take the final three games of this series to complete a seven and two homestand. And back to four games better than 500. That matches their high water mark of the year. Mission accomplished here starting this stretch of 19 out of 25 at home. Great homestand off for six then back home for a long homestand with the uh, Cardinals Marlins and Rockies. And uh, Cubs should be in pretty good shape if all goes according to plan. In these next couple of weeks. Final score from Wrigley Field the Cubs five and the Giants one and we'll have more. In a moment stay with us. Chicago Cubs baseball on ABC 7 is being brought to you by Mercedes Benz the best or nothing by Lakeside Bank. We make banking simple Lakeside Bank. It's about time. 
and buy Jeep. See your Jeep dealer today and experience the freedom that comes with legendary capability.